Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Getting Creative With, the show where ADL staff engage with an arbitrarily chosen topic to stay inspired, stay playful, and creative. My name is Ksenia, and with me today are ADL staff members Mackenzie, Laura, Christopher, and Amanda. So this week's theme is scraps. You guys, um, it can be a noun, it can be a verb, it can be an adjective. Scrap paper, scrappy, scrap food, scrapbooking. Um, Maggie, what do you got for us? Okay. <laughs> Let's see if they'll still stay together. Yeah, I think this one's the cutest. Oh. And I have a second one that's kind of fatter. <laughs> They're little yarn birds. So I took scraps of different colored yarn and um I and cardstock. Um they're I measured out different sizes of cardstock, wrapped uh yarn around it, then cut them and then tied them all together and uh tied them around a piece of newspaper. Oh, and that's what got this round shape. And then of course you add some eyes and you add a little bit of scrap paper for a beak and then some wire for some feet. Oh my gosh, that like it's so well designed. My mind is blown right now. It looks like a little little robin. <laughs> yeah. This one was my first one and it didn't go so well. <laughs> that's why it looks so chubby and it's fallen apart. But this one looks the best. And it looks really derpy. It has like the Finding Nemo uh, Dory, Finding Dory face. Aww. Like that's what her, what the face makes me think of is uh, Finding Dory. Is, uh, Dory. You'll see in the picture. The picture has like this derpy like tweak to its head that makes it look <laughs> like Dory. <laughs> That's so cute. I really like that you made two of them, though, even if you made the one that you didn't like so much and wanted to make the next one. It's really cool when you have a pair of something because then you can set them out together. Just so it tells a different story, you know, mm -hmm. or you can see how the, the evolution of the craft process. Super cute. <laughs> Was that difficult to like lay out and design? Because I see that you have different colored yarn and it's so well color blocked. How did you okay. do that? So basically the dark is two centimeters longer than the lighter colors mm -hmm. and i put them in a t pattern so i tied them in the center so they were about this long each and i did i i put the light color down this way and the dark color over and i pulled the light over and then pulled it in all i see like that okay. it's hard to just i know how to do it but it's hard to describe <laughs> how i did it um, and I used the side color. The side color um, is mainly in the center. Mm -hmm. So the top and bottom wrapped around the sides with a uh, paper in the center. Mm -hmm. And um, you can kind of see where they're tied. So there's the center tie for the light color and then they're tied together right here. So that point, mm -hmm. that's a knot actually. That's what makes the face, is them tied together. That's so cute. What did you make the beak out of? Orange cardstock, just a little cone of orange cardstock. Very, very cute. I love it. Oh, I know. And you don't really have to, the wire just sticks right into the paper so they stay on. So it's just simple bent wire. Do you know where you're going to set them out? Uh, no. <laughs> Pro I have some little shelves around, so I'll probably stick them on something. Mm -hmm. The issue that I keep running into as I do these projects is running out of shelf space. Like I'm looking at my bookshelf right now and it's full of mostly mm -hmm. projects and not books. So <laughs> those are in boxes. <laughs> very, very cool. All righty. Well then, I am, according to my list, up next. So thank you, Maggie. Um, I immediately thought of scrap food or scraps when I um, just was thinking of the word scrap in general. So I realized um, 
I had some fruit that was getting kind of soft and I decided to go ahead and slice them very thinly using a mandolin. So I have a little lime right here, a little lime and a pear slice and I dehydrated them in the microwave because I don't have a dehydrator. But luckily the internet has instructed me in how to dehydrate very thin pieces of fruit. Um, Cause I love the detail in these fruits. So I was like, oh, you know what? I can make prints with this. So I used um, my little printing press and a brayer and just regular linoleum ink to um, make these fun little cards. They're beautiful. I love how the detail came up. Like the pears were my favorite. I did the pear a few times. Mm -hmm. And wow. I'm like in love with botanical prints in general. Mm -hmm. um, but this was, this was a really cool way for me to sort of capture the, uh, this one was like before I totally dehydrated the line. It was kind of moist. <laughs> um, I love capturing the details of plants and uh, leaves and things like that, but I'm really bad at putting them down myself. So I'm like, oh, I'll just let nature do the work. So that is my scrap project. <laughs> I love the, the tones in the, the blacks and grays that appear in it mm -hmm. and just the texture. And I love that it's a small, it's a small print. It's so, a small image. That's really cool. Yeah. And also use the nature thing to make something out of it. That's kind of neat too. I honestly was just happy to find a way to dehydrate fruit in the microwave because otherwise like here I tried doing it raw. Which one is this? I tried doing it raw. I just sliced it really, really thinly, one of the limes, and it turned out like that. <laughs> <laughs> so like the acid and the juices interacted with the um, linoleum print ink and obviously I put a lot of pressure on it as I printed. Mm -hmm. So it that didn't go very well but hey i love the process of it and it was fun to see it getting more crisp and clear as i went on so these will be fun little i think kitchen decorations for me or mm -hmm. even like a recipe card box cover of some sort yeah you could write the recipe in the back of it and something. yeah i mean and you don't even have to use ink you could just eat them for a snack <laughs> there you go <laughs> i nibbled on the pear to be honest. Not not the one that I printed on. I did a different one. So yeah. No disclaimer. No. Don't eat it if you use it for printing. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the warning. Yep. I'm, I'm surprised a microwave works for dehydrating. Uh, does that work better than uh, broiling or using a low heat setting on an oven? I found that it did. Um, the reason being is like I my oven isn't very reliable and there are parts of it which are harder hotter than other um, parts of it and the microwave was just really consistent so as long as I dried the fruit pretty well beforehand and laid it on a paper towel I mean it took a while each I, I laid them out and each like little batch took about 15 minutes uh, wow. to fully dehydrate which is better than you know like four hours or five hours in the oven Mm -hmm. um, and it was even, so that was good, and it retained its shape, whereas with the broiler, a lot of times, like I, when I tried it at least, um, a lot of times the broiler will singe things really badly for oh, me, yep. um, and this was just a much more gentle way for it to, and a less abrupt way for it to heat up and dehydrate, so that worked well, um, so that was, that was really good, and I didn't want to spend like four hours with my oven on because it was really hot <laughs> so yeah do you have to turn it really high on your settings on your microwave to um microwave the fruits to dehydrate no. no actually i have to turn it on like um it was it was interesting playing with the settings i had to turn it on like half power because otherwise the fruit like exploded or like rippled oh. i went through a few slices of pears i'll be honest yeah. um but yeah, I, it was like half powered and um, that was the most sort of gentle and even heating way for me to have dehydrated. But really handy if you ever want to make, you know, something like, for instance, the orange that I used, I could make like Christmas ornaments out of because I know like orange mm -hmm. is really popular. 
it for that reason. Mm -hmm. But yeah, excited to have tried that um, to know the detail of it. So cool. Thanks for listening to my little my little food scrap rant. <laughs> um, let's see, Aurora, you are up next. What do you have for us today? So um, instead of food and yarn, I'm doing paper scrap because um, a lot of time I see a lot of books or a lot of papers got recycled and I try to use the book page that uh, recycle book or even brochures, library have brochures that they recycle and I try to save certain colors or something interesting to me. So I've been collecting them a lot um, throughout for my different program, thinking I would use them, but with the pandemic, we are not having a program. So I thought this would be a good time for me to use some of the scrap paper that I collect. So you can see the little image behind me, and that is my rainbow. I don't know if you see it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, so it is my rainbow um, clouds and raindrops that I made out of the scrap paper. But um, yeah, I have seen someone do it, and I thought that would be something neat that I could just hang and enjoy. So I did that. I just cut a bunch of paper and curl it and then glue them on a box upside down so that they can. And then also tie some string and make some raindrops. So that be something kind of neat. And to me, it's a nice way to reuse some of the paper that I have collect from whatever that I could find, so. It's so lovely. Oh, thank you. How did you connect? It looks like you made a bunch of like the paper loops. Um, how did you connect them or form the shape for the base of the cloud? Um, so like I said, I turned the box upside down with the lid. Oh, thing. Box. So, so there's more like rectangle, you can see it. And then I just attached a lot of the scrap paper on the bottom of the box. So I hang it up. And then also air string on the bottom too for the ring drops. And then did you did you like do double sided raindrops around the string or did you just like glue yeah. them? Yeah. I have to, yeah. I, I use a scrap paper and make sure they same colors when I do both sides so that it will be doesn't matter which way I hang it, you will see it the same. Mm -hmm. And it looks so pretty in the window too. And cheerful. Um, yes. Yeah, I saw that. Someone make, I don't know how big they make, but I thought, oh, that'd be something neat just to hang on a ceiling and mm -hmm. look at it. So. so are they weighed down at all at the bottoms on the string, like to keep no. them hanging evenly? Mm -hmm. They just... No, just the last drop is nothing. It's just paper, slightly weight, but it's not that heavy. Mm -hmm. Just string hang down. Cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, the color combinations you chose, like I'm just, I can't stop staring at it just because it's, I don't know, it looks so well composed. <laughs> yeah, because I I looked at the whole bunch of, if you look carefully on the picture, some of them is a brochure that we have for the adult and it's brown colors. And um, I have to use what paper I have recycle wise. So I, I saw the brown and then I thought, okay, I tried to add some blue and green, make it more nature color mm -hmm. looking. So that's why I chose that. And then I add a little more orange and um, white to make it a little bit more pop up. And stuff, okay. so. Oh, that's beautiful. So you didn't plan out the colors ahead of time. You just kind of like went with it. <laughs> Yeah, because I have so many different variation of colors, but I try to choose, I know I have a lot of the browns in there, so I try to choose some other color that kind of looks good with it. Mm -hmm. So, but I start with the brown first because that's what I have from the scrap, and then I, I just add on more mm -hmm. papers. Is it just all one type of paper, like just construction paper, or do you have other types of paper in there? 
Oh, it's all type. I mean, all types. Some even advertisement that comes to my house. The blue. Uh. <laughs> it's it's all type of scrap paper that I see that I use for that. So. And one more question for you: the um, curled papers that you used. Did you have a uniform size that you cut them into in order to sort of be able to? cut them all um, at once, or did you vary the sizes? I vary the sizes because um, depend on the book page size that I get, because sometimes um, they recycle picture book, which is bigger, and sometimes, you know, just regular size book, those cover page is smaller, so I just roughly just cut what I need and then just glue them on. Nice. So. Cool. All right, that's beautiful. Thank you, Aurora. <laughs> wow. Um, Christopher, scraps. What do you got? Yes. <laughs> uh, so I also did something with paper. I've really been enjoying paper a lot lately, and it's kind of miraculous how it's made and how many different uses there are of it and how we use it in art. So I... Um, I just made one copy of this, but you can do, there are a lot of variations. I, I made an envelope using an old uh, kind of rude uh, English comic magazine that has a lot, it's all just comics and it's um, not very polite, this magazine, but I did check <laughs> and make sure there was nothing bad on this page. So uh, I took apart an envelope and used it as a template. And then just, I have all these old magazines around. You could also do it with dictionaries. You can do it with maps, which is what I usually do. And I wanted to do that at the library. I had a program coming up just for that. But I thought it'd be a great way to show off what you can do with any kind of scrap paper that's of a suitable size. Of course, on the front, you would want to put a white piece of paper as a background because no, no sane person could read if you wrote an address over that comic art. So, uh, and it's easy. You just need a pen and a piece of scrap paper and something to glue the, the inner flaps down with. And then you need a last bit of glue for the flap that you fold before you uh, mail it. So... Straightforward. What glue did you use? I just used a glue stick. All I could find at first was a glue gun. <laughs> of course. And I knew that was a bad idea, so I didn't do that. <laughs> See, I've come along in my, my crafting process. <laughs> That's really cool. And I love that you were able to use some of your cool old like magazines. Like I can see you doing this with like old scenes and magazines and I love that you mentioned maps because I too have like an old map co map collection and there's not enough projects for me to use it all up with like stuff that I own in my home, not just the library stash. Right. Um, use it for like wrapping paper and things like that in small cards, but they're so big. You have so much of it. Like, what do you, but I really love the envelope idea. That's really cool. Oh, thanks. And just today, I, I have an old dictionary that I was going to throw out and I thought about ripping some pages out of that to make these envelopes because that would, you know, some just pages of text are beautiful, beautifully designed in their own right. And it might make a nice envelope design too. Yeah. So. Do you have First a way, one. do you have a way to um, possibly waterproof them or offer a little bit more protection for the envelope? Cause I know mine, like I know I have a friend in Germany, a pen pal, who sends me letters in those kinds of envelopes. And she sends them using like really, really thick, glossy magazine pages. So that's how she makes them. And they're almost waxy in their consistency. And I've tried doing that with her as well. I was like, oh, let me just take a page out of like, you know, good housekeeping. And it came through so torn up and like wet. And she just like, like oh, glad I got this letter in time, but, um, yeah, couldn't could hardly read it. <laughs> right. Yeah, this one is really thin because it's from this comic magazine. Yeah. But if you did use a thicker paper or even something from a discarded book, 
with uh, thicker, glossy paper. That could work really well. I think some of the commercial paper has clay in it, if I'm not mistaken. And that's what gives it a lot more sturdiness. I wonder if you could use Mod Podge even to create a little coating on it too. Yeah, you know, I'm sure there are things that you could, uh, or, or something like, uh, what do you spray on a pastel chalk drawing fixer? Fixative, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, maybe that would work too. Yeah. There's also a spray that you do for felt boots. I know, like, oh, okay. I know my mom had a shoe spray that waterproofs mm -hmm. uh, those yeah. cloth cloth shoes for yeah, winter. They, I think Scotch Guard, aren't they? Like for uh, a yeah. protective Scotch Guard that does that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now that you mention it, we have a bottle of this waterproofing stuff for our tent uh, to like reinforce the seams of it. Right. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, thanks. For that. And I have to ask, do you plan on sending somebody a letter in that envelope? I do. I've always loved writing letters so much. And I have just boxes and boxes of letters that people have written me with crazy envelope art and decorations and a lot of fun stuff. So yeah, I'm sure this is going to go in the mail before too long. <laughs> Nice. Thank you, Christopher. Um, Amanda, hello. <laughs> Hi. So I did a few things with scraps. I, I'm a, my collection of craft supplies is minimal. I've really pared things down over the years. And um, I wanted to use, I didn't want to use recycled materials. I didn't want to go to my recycling, my garbage, my recycling bin. Um, I wanted to use things that I, scraps I'd had from other crafts, and I went and I was poking through all my things, and then I found this. This is one of my favorite things I have in my craft supplies. It's just this basket, and it's full of all of these fabric scraps um, that are useless other than bringing me big joy. Um, it's just a giant stack of fabrics, and they're all of the different colors of fabric where I test all my block printing on fabric on. So it's just a whole stack of all these bits and pieces, different colors and prints, and it's just insane. There's just so much of it. And I just love them all. And I love flipping through them to see what color ink I put on what color fabric. Um, some of these blocks became bags, some didn't. Um, I used to print yardage of fabric where I would have a lot, of, lot more scraps left over when I would cut out the, the pieces I wanted from it. Um, but it's just really fun to also to kind of to look back and see what colors I was printing and what shapes I was printing. Um, so I went to the this giant heap and I laid them all out on my bed and I sorted through them and found some of my favorites and I decided to do a little collage with the fabric and I used an embroidery hoop and this is what I came up with. Oh, wow. So this is a seven inch embroidery hoop and what I did was I tried to find, um, and I didn't pick my favorites necessarily, I tried to pick ones that fit on here. Um, so this, the basic, this Turquoise in the back is a full piece. This beige, the avocado is a full piece. And then this like chartreusey green is also a full piece, just to give it a base. Um, so you can kind of see the back of it, just to give me a base. And so what I did, um, and my sewing machine was in the shop and I just got it back last week and I, I was gonna do all hand. But then once I knew I was getting my machine back, I wanted to do a little tester. Um, so this is the first thing I've sewed besides like test stitches with my machine being repaired, which is beautiful and she's quiet and wonderful. Um, so I did mostly machine stitching. So I just mach machine stitched the, ma the main three pieces of fabric together. And then I kind of laid out the fabric before I print on it. The edges that are raw ends up with these little fringes. And so I like the little fringes on there just to give it a little bit of texture. Um, and then I tried to pick pieces that fit. And so there's several little small pieces that I attach to it. Um, and again, I use this machine, my machine, and I just use the same color. Um, I use the lime green thread, which to me is sort of a basic neutral. It's my version of like a white or a beige. Um, so I use lime green. Um, but then after I did it, I thought, well, I wish I would have used like red or something snappy. So I did get my orange thread out and I started doing a little bit of hand stitching here. And I'll probably add a little more to it for stitching. I don't think I'm going to add any more like pieces to it. Um, and these are all like black printed pieces of fabric that are just like for my collection. Um, and then I didn't, and then I tightened it in my hoop 
I got everything straightened and I just trim the edges. I don't like I do embroidery, but for this one, I just, I didn't worry about having like a beautiful back of back to it. So I just trim the fabric really thin so that if I put it like on a wall, it'll lay flat without pieces of fabric or shreds or things happening. So a little fabric collage with some old scraps I have from test printing. The end. Oh. Wow, it's just great. I, it's really beautiful. Thank you. Truly, I love that your version of a neutral thread is just like lime green. That's, that's <laughs> well, I got a lime green wall back here. Yeah. Um, well, it's just because it's you can barely see it's there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I wish I would have done more of a contrast. Yeah, like this pizza is a piece of pizza. <laughs> yeah. And I love the fringe next to the Medusa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, really thematic. Oh. So it's, you pretty much kind of um, take whatever you printed out and kind of lay it down, see what works and how you position it. And that's how you choose your compositions of your um, piece. Yeah, so I, the main thing I wanted to get was the, the main pieces to go in the background, these three big pieces, just to have a base. And then these, like, this is a small piece of fabric. This is a small piece. This is a small piece. These are all smaller pieces. Um, this um, orange slice is small, the leaf is small. Um, but like this is a whole piece, but yeah, I just tried to pick, and again, I wasn't picking my favorites. I was trying to pick colors that popped. Like here I added some orange up there because I had a warm color down here. Uh -huh. I really liked this leaf when I printed it and didn't do enough with it. So I decided to have the leaf. Um, so yeah, I could have done so many other, as you can see my giant pile. Um, yeah. I want to make more and use up different more scraps because it was really fun to make. Um, yeah, this you could just a seven inch hoop. So if you find with a tiny hoop, you'd be more limited. Um, or even a bigger hoop. Can you imagine a bigger hoop? Wow. Yeah. Bigger hoop would be cool too. Yeah. Oh, there's a doe. Can we give a shout out to the dog that's here? Oh yeah, yeah. Onyx. Onyx has made an appearance before. She I saw another, another dog. So Hi Onyx. You're at a crafting thing. <laughs> if you noticed earlier, I had two little points right here. Uh -huh. That was my other dog who was having some anxiety freaking out. <laughs> oh. They really, really don't like it when I'm on Zoom. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> well, I guess crafts are calming for them, hey? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right, anyways, I had to give a shout out to the dog, so. Yeah, of course. I Always. think yours would be cool if you had a bigger one and a smaller one and had, like, the three. Mm -hmm. That'd be really yeah, cool. Yeah, that would be hanging. cool. Because this is a seven-inch hoop, which I always thought was pretty big as far as, like, doing a smaller embroidery project. Seven inches is a pretty big hoop. A lot of what I have are with four-inch ones. Mm -hmm. Um. But I just picked like these converted hoops up at like thrift stores or people mm -hmm. don't want them anymore. They're all over the place and I just kind of collect them so I can do stuff like this with them. Yeah, pretty neat. This was cool. I like that we all did something a little bit different. Yeah, always. I love that. Yeah, there's never been an overlap, I don't think, since we started this. So it's been really fun just seeing, like, seeing everyone's projects. Um, ugh, I'm always so inspired when I leave. I'm like, oh, I need 8 million embroidery hoops and a bunch of scrap <laughs> Oh gosh. <laughs> I need a map collection. Yep. <laughs> Gotta start that. I need to go to the reuse center and scrap box and all that. So and start see. block printing yeah. on fabric. <laughs> yep. Yep. Let me just go ahead. I seriously like, since this this thing has started, I've wanted to pick up like probably eight different new hobbies. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. infuriating and wonderful and inspiring and it's really made me sort of double down in my own work and um explore other avenues too it just helps me stay really really playful and i love that <laughs> yeah well hopefully too we've inspired some viewers to try their hand at some new crafts or things they wouldn't have thought of with their their scraps and pieces they have at home yeah exactly scraps are great you can always make something new out of them mm -hmm. well you guys thank you so much as always i know i say this every time but you're amazing <laughs> i'm always overwhelmed this is great fun for me every single week to play but also just to see what everyone's project is it's really cool <laughs> all righty well with that i think we shall end it thank you so much again and i'll see you guys next time i think next week's theme is bottles so nope it's blocks blocks, blocks. Another one too and i got blocks. an idea and i'm so excited i haven't done it yet oh my gosh i just <laughs> i literally it doesn't involve it. mine does not involve block printing Models <laughs> is in October. You're you're a couple. I'm couple way ahead. ahead. I'm way ahead. I think I'm really excited about bottles because I like I just 
I won't spoil it, but I just started on it today. So, you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I know that feeling. Yeah. Right. Getting way too excited ahead of time. It's a good problem to have. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. That was lots of fun. I feel inspired. Thank you. Likewise. Have a great afternoon, you guys. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.